Good morning and welcome to worship today at Grace Lutheran here in Boone. I'm Pastor Steve and on behalf of our whole congregation would like to welcome you to our digital worship today. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday in the life of the church, one of the few days in the church year where we celebrate a doctrine uh, as opposed to an individual or some other kind of celebration. So it's always an exciting one. And normally I do a better job of making sure I've got a supply preacher today. Uh, so you'll hear me creatively avoid trying to talk about the mystery of the Holy Trinity today in our worship service. Just a couple special announcements. Today is also our high school graduate recognition Sunday, and we'll celebrate with Luke Ramsdale and family at our in-person worship service and have a special blessing for him later on in this worship service as well. Just a reminder, Vicar Christopher has his ordination on the calendar. It will be next Saturday at 2 p.m. That is June the 5th at 2 p.m. Watch your email for more information. We're still trying to figure out if there's a way we can make a digital or a live version of the service available for the congregation. But even if we're not, make sure that you take a moment to stop and pray for Vicar Christopher as he becomes Pastor Christopher and begins then to serve the very next day at Mount Hebron Lutheran Church in Leesville, South Carolina. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life 
and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Psalms. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to the God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. 
The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. In the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. This ends the reading. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus also said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may, not, may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What's the common phrase? Everything is negotiable. I think it's something that we normally talk about in real estate transactions. But the truth is that this idea creeps into a lot of other parts of life. Our kids are master negotiators, all three of them, really. I think most parents would believe that their children will grow up to be lawyers. At least that's what my mom always used to say about my brother and I. So I tried to look up that phrase, everything is negotiable, to try to figure out where that came from. And honestly, I couldn't find the origins of the phrase at all. There were lots of quotes, uh, including even a book title, but none of them seemed to be the originator of the phrase. 
It seems that this idea has just been around for a while. And maybe this mentality, everything is negotiable, can help us to better understand the motives of Nicodemus in our familiar reading from John's Gospel today. We hear the often quoted John 3.16, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. But I think what we often forget is that Jesus says these things in the context of a conversation with a person named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, uh, one whom others in the community looked to for guidance on how to live their lives faithfully in accordance with God's law. He would have had a great deal of authority and respect in the community. So our scene opens with this man, Nicodemus, approaching the place where Jesus is staying. But it's an interesting commentary as John notes that this meeting happens at night. Now we don't know exactly why Nicodemus goes to see Jesus at night. We'd have to speculate that if he went during the daytime, he was a prominent enough member of the community and maybe even wore different types of clothing that caused him to stand out that others would have noticed and wondered what he was doing. But he goes at night to see Jesus. And I think it's important to remember that how John's Gospel starts. It begins with these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jumping ahead a verse. What, came in, what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Nicodemus goes to Jesus in the darkness. If we read just a little past our, past our reading today on to verse 19 in chapter 3, Jesus is giving a commentary on this interaction with the Pharisee, and he says this to the disciples, and this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light. Nicodemus goes at night. Why? Well, maybe it's not so risky. Maybe in the darkness he feels like he has just a little bit more control over the whole situation. Maybe in the darkness it seems possible that Nicodemus, this prominent leader, might be able to negotiate something with Jesus, this upstart prophet. Nicodemus wants to be in the driver's seat. He wants to control what's going on before they lose control of what's happening with this Jesus and the people who follow him. And so he goes at nighttime, and that's the backdrop for John 3.16. And John 3.16 is also the culmination of God's response to him and to all people who want to know Jesus and yet also want to be in control. John 3.16 is the answer to people who want the life of faith to neatly fit in to their lives as they already are, instead of opening ourselves to something holy and new. Last week we were discussing in Sunday school, uh, we're doing these moral leaders in divided ages, and it's a study of different folks, and we were talking about Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and we were wondering about a great number of things but one of the questions that, we, that I put out for us to wrestle with is whether people come to church or attend a Bible study or a small group activity at church in order to be affirmed or if they come to be challenged and changed in the experience. 
I guess it seems to me, and I'd argue that the 24-hour news cycle and, and social media with its curated content, well, they often lead us to believe that everything we come in contact with should serve to help us feel better about ourselves and to affirm what we already believe. Maybe that's the real tragedy of our current era, that we're losing the ability to learn. We're losing this sense that we ought to always be growing. We're losing the ability to be challenged in a way that broadens our perspectives and spurs on that growth that's needed in life. But the truth is that this isn't new to our era. In fact, this is exactly what Nicodemus is looking for from Jesus. He comes at night so as to risk nothing. And what he's looking for from Jesus is affirmation. But what Nicodemus fails to understand, and what we have trouble learning, is that God is creating a pathway to eternal life, not for some future far away, but here and now, in the midst of us. And this new and eternal life, well, it calls us to die to who we've been so that we might rise to the more abundant life that is shaped by the cross. And here's the real kicker, though. In John 3.16, God moves first in love for creation, before we can move or respond or try to claim that work as our own. One commentator puts it this way, if God makes God's great love for the world and us completely unconditional, then we suddenly, or makes this love conditional, then we suddenly have tremendous power. We can begin to negotiate. We can threaten to reject God's love. We can even tell God to take a hike if we don't care for God's terms. But when God just loves us completely and unconditionally, and when God just goes and dies for us, well then our jig is up. There is nothing we can do to influence such a God. We have no leg to stand on if we desire to negotiate our position in relationship to God. And that's the real scandal of this passage, is that God chooses to send the Son to save the world before the world knows it really needs saving. God sends the Son to save the world, and it's not negotiable. It's already happened to the world and for us. God has already brought light into creation, even though we prefer to stare at the darkness, to dwell in the darkness. God has already brought life into creation, even though we demand a death-centric control that chokes out the life that God desires to share with us. And God is already enfolding us into that new and transformed life. Jesus' call is for us to abandon the trust that we place in ourself, abandon the myth that we can be in control, abandon this mirage that we can negotiate when it comes to matters of light and darkness, life and death. And instead, Jesus calls us to rejoice in the saving work of God already fully completed in the cross of Christ. Jesus causes us to see ourselves for what we truly are, broken and also loved by God. And then we give thanks for the truly undeserved love that we receive from God. And then we also discover a calling to an abundance of life, a calling that constantly challenges us to take a deeper look at what really drives what we do, to take a deeper look at how we use what we have received from God. And it challenges us to move in humility toward each other in love. The good news this morning is that God really loves the world. 
And that even in spite of our persisting in darkness, our desire to control things, our need for affirmation only, our resistance to growth, that God still gives his only Son so that we may not perish, but that we would have eternal and abundant life that can begin today. And and maybe the even better news, God refuses to negotiate on this love. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers of the Church for today were prepared by Jan Burgess. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Creating God, we give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation. Thank you for nourishing rains, spring blossoms, and budding trees. Thank you for the many ways we have to enjoy your creation and instill in us a passion for its preservation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Abba, Father, we pray for your church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be continually reborn through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Cosmic Christ, we pray for all nations and lift up leaders called to govern with the spirit of compassion for the poor and the oppressed. Give courage to leaders who work for justice and equality, and please bring an end to all conflict and violence, especially in the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherding Christ, we pray for App State faculty and staff as they close out an unprecedented academic year. We also lift up our school children and high school students as they also end a year unlike any other. Especially, we ask your blessing on all the graduating seniors, including Luke Ramsdell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Spirit, we pray for those who still suffer the ongoing effects of COVID around the world. We ask you to comfort all who have been affected. We also pray for the victims and survivors of violence and other trauma, and ask that you would give respite to those living with PTSD and any other kind of mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we pray for this worshiping community of grace, that the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith and those who have, been, who have borne witness to your love. Bring us with them to dwell with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Our worship will continue now with our offering. If you'd like to, you can pause our worship video and go over to our homepage, graceboon.org. There you'll find a drop-down to donate in support of our mission to share God's love so that all are served and supported.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and call us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This Sunday is the last of all of our May celebrations here at Grace. And today we honor our high school graduate, Luke Ramsdell. And we are so thrilled to be able to celebrate with him this morning at our in-person service and offer him this blessing. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks especially today for the milestones that Luke has attained as he begins a new phase of his life. May he know your love in all the experiences he has. Bless Jeff and Carla who have raised Luke and nourished him in the Christian faith. Give them strength in your holy presence and give them many joyful reunions with their son as he continues a path that will move him to a new place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke will be going to NC State in the fall and uh, doing two majors together. Uh, he shared some information, including a special memory from his time at Grace. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.